Do you think that the expansion of the federal government that we're seeing, that we're, try, that we're seeing here, and the, and the New York Times the other day called it a really cradle-to-grave expansion to entitlements. Do you think that, 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 it's a, that we should be doing that to the tune of $3.5 trillion, and do you think that the concurrent tax increases will have no negative effect on either GDP or uh, corporate profits? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think that's what we need to do? So, Jim, I, again, I'm not in government anymore, but what I would say personally is I think there are a lot of things we need to be doing. I would put at the very top of that list, uh, altering the course that we're on with regard to climate change. And that probably does, not probably, it does involve a significant amount of uh, new activity. And by the way, if we wanted to finance that with a carbon tax or with a tradable permit system, that would be fine too. Under you know, from my perspective, that's not uh, entirely what we're doing here. So, like with most things in life, uh, or at least in politics, it's a mixed bag. At least from my perspective, there are things I like, things I don't like. But uh, you know, it's not up to me anymore, Joe. And I'm 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 glad for that. But you you you've seen that if China and India continue along the same path, that that the the type of actual influence we could have in the next 10, 15, 20 years is. Do you think that it would that we'd have fewer weather events if we undertake this action with with the three and a half trillion? Do you think that the things would actually change in terms of flooding or wildfires? Do you think we can influence that? My, my point was that we could do a massively ambitious. You asked the question broadly about government spending and government right. involvement in, in well, the economy, about, uh, and they're, uh, levy, they're like building up levees and 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 you know making sure the subways don't flood. Are you talking about changing the the outlook for for the for the the, the number and frequency of, of weather events? You think we there's a that? whole whole bunch of things we need to do. We okay. we need to put a price on carbon. We need to invest a ton in technology. We do need to do some um, abatement. And, and other protection measures do. But I, I, I don't think you can look at what's happening, including, frankly, what's happening in Texas as we speak, and just be complacent about the pathway forward. I, I would be taking absolutely every step we could to reduce the climate risk that the world is facing. I think that is the dominant economic risk that we face over the next couple decades. What are you seeing in uh, uh, in what Texas or the what Nicholas you're talking about? Right. Yeah. Well, Nicholas today, but we're seeing a know, significant no, number of extreme weather events. Yep. Okay. Um, tell me about what the the positive things you're seeing about it in healthcare, and is it the digitalization of healthcare, or is it it and is are we addressing that effectively in in the, some of these proposals? Because we got, I mean, heck, we're throwing five six trillion around with with the other infrastructure plan. Seems like. There should be yeah, some well, there. We're, we're in the odd position of you keep looking to the government to make uh, all of the change and improve everything. There's a lot that's happening out out uh, in, the, in the real world, as they say. Um, yeah, I think, look, there are several things that are happening, the most exciting of which is we've dramatically accelerated the use of digital technology in healthcare because of the pandemic and because of the increase in, in uh, virtual visits during that time. It came off a little bit um, as people have gone back to seeing the doctors, doctors and going to the hospital uh, physically, but there's been a step change there. Lazard has a new um, healthcare survey coming out in a week or two. One of the things that healthcare professionals see as being persistent is the new you know dominant role of virtual healthcare and it's convenient it might improve quality and uh it might reduce cost but it's certainly a lot more convenient than having to go to the doctor every time that you have even a minor issue shepherd smith here thanks for watching cnbc on youtube